Have you ever wondered what the key economic indicators are that portfolio managers look at on a day to day basis to try and determine the direction of markets in the future? I certainly have. Um, and I want to find out what they are. I'm joined by Dean Cook. He's a portfolio manager on the multi asset team. Dean, it's a big question. It's a large topic. My ask of you is to distill it down to your top three macro indicators that you look at. So over to you. Thanks, Shane. Only three. I'll have to be brief in that case. Um, so my first will be the US non-farm payrolls. Um, the short version is how many jobs has the US added or subtracted on a monthly basis? Um, why is this important? Well, the US is not only the world's largest economy, it's also the world's largest stock market. So changes in um, the labor pool um, are an important impact on economic growth, but also risk sentiment when it comes to managing uh, multi-asset portfolios. It uses a sample size of about 131,000 businesses and government agencies. It's released on the first Friday of every month and attracts a lot of eyeballs uh, the afternoon for us uh, when it when it lands. Yeah, I know it's 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 been one of those um, indicators that I've been hearing about since I joined the industry. One confusing thing though is the name. What what exactly? Why is it called non farm payroll? It, that interested me when I joined the city as well. Um, so effectively, the clues in the name it, it measures the changes in employment outside of the farming sector. It excludes the farming sector because um, it's got a high proportion of casual labour and it's incredibly seasonal. So to include it in the numbers would introduce lots of volatility and unhelpful sort of seasonality that wouldn't really show the underlying strength of, of the US economy. Um, so the latest print was 209,000 jobs. That's a pretty healthy clip for the US economy. That gives the Fed the current confidence that the economy is performing well, but not overheating. OK, OK, really clear. OK, so number one, US employment data. Indicator number two. It's the PMIs. Um, so this stands for Purchasing Managers Indices, and it tells us what companies, or more specifically the people who control purchasing decisions, what they're thinking and doing now. That's a useful contrast to something like retail sales, which tells you what retail sales were in the past. This tries to capture people's forward-looking intentions. Um, it's a survey completed by those individuals who, who, who are responsible for, say, buying inventory and sheet steel in a car manufacturing plant, and it breaks down how they're feeling about trading conditions and prospects for the coming months. There's one for the uh, manufacturing sector and also one for the services sector. It's fairly high frequency, so we get it every month. Uh, and if the number is above 50, then generally speaking, the economy or that part of the economy is expanding. And if it's below 50, then it's likely contracting. OK, OK. Yeah. Again, another indicator that that I have heard about for quite some time. And it does make sense. I mean, it's, it's like a window into the future. You're asking somebody about what inventory they're ordering, um, which is obviously going to give you an indication as to what demand they expect in the future. So that that's quite interesting. Uh, really quickly, what, what do they look like? Services manufacturing, what are the latest reads? So broadly speaking, things look pretty good in the services sector at the moment. So imagine that PMI above 50, depending on the market that you're looking at across the globe. Um, so prices have been coming down now, so the rate of inflation uh, and demand has been very, very strong. Uh, different story for manufacturing, where um, at the moment PMIs are broadly across the board negative. OK, OK, some good, some bad. Finally, indicator number three. So Shane, sorry, I've bent the rules slightly here. The first two indicators are things that we look at all the time, whereas the third is something that I'm looking at sort of more closely at the moment, and that's the Bank of England Credit Conditions Survey. It's a quarterly report that shows credit trends across the economy, and it's compiled from a survey that goes directly to lenders. So they'll provide a report on both the demand for and supply of credit across the economy into different parts of it. So credit's a really key enabler for economic growth. It's become much more expensive compared to the, the last kind of couple of years. And we might have expected, certainly if you were to look at the headlines, to have seen a material slowdown in both demand and supply. The latest edition, however, contains a few reasons to be optimistic. So we've seen some slowdowns, as you might expect, in mortgage related lending, but demand for credit has actually increased in areas like corporate lending. So this is better than feared. And as I say, if you were to read the headlines, you might get one picture. But actually, the data in the credit condition survey suggests that the UK economy is holding up a bit better than feared. OK, that is really interesting, because definitely if you read the media, you would get a very stark picture. So 
highlights the importance of looking at the data, which I guess is why you have a job and why all this sort of stuff is important. Um, that's really clear, Dean. I mean, it's it's been nice to look at those three indicators. The first two, I think many will have heard of and they're the kind of evergreen. But as you say, I think indicator number three highlights that it's not a it's not a case of just looking at the same, you know, data points all the time. It evolves over time and at certain points in time, different indicators will have more significance. So I think that that really brings that to the fore. Really interesting, Dean. Um, hopefully others have found it as interesting as I have. We will be back next week. We will put a portfolio manager on the spot. We'll pick that one topic that we think is of interest to our listeners. Until then, take care. Thanks, Shane.